So the markets aren't looking great. We did have the Ethereum merge this week. I will talk briefly about that, but then I'll do a more in-depth video next week looking at the Ethereum merge and Cardano staking model and some of the differences in that. Within the Cardano ecosystem, still lots going on. Endmaker are doing an airdrop, MinSwap adding some utility, Sunday Swap governance live on Testnet, Cardano Foundation announcing some partnerships, also updates on the Cardano Summit and some of the other events happening within the Cardano ecosystem. A few other things, I'll put timestamps below as normal. Give the video a share if you think others can benefit. Like, comment, questions, anything like that below. Subscribe if you're new, I do appreciate it. Let's jump into it. So Ethereum went proof of stake this week. They had the merge, which changed them from a proof of work blockchain to proof of stake. I plan to do more on this in this video, but with all of the different things going on within Cardano, I'm going to leave this section here until a video next week where I look at Cardano versus Ethereum's proof of stake models. On a high level, what's going on here very quickly, the merge happened, changed them to proof of stake. But when people started looking into it, they realized that Ethereum 2.0, which is meant to bring increased scalability, lower costs and all of that, that's not coming for a long time yet and unlocking staking as well. So people who staked their Ethereum some over a year ago, it's going to be at least another year before they can unstake that because the merge is just the first step. That brings proof of stake. All of the other sectors here or all of the other stages will bring some of them other improvements in other hard forks. But timeline on that, I haven't seen the proper timeline on that just yet. One issue that people are starting to highlight is it's starting to look extremely centralized on Ethereum so far with the proof of stake because with the way that they do staking, you have to have 32 ETH to run your own staking node. It's a lot different to how Cardano works, but we'll talk about that next week. So with that, there are centralized entities that do this and it means that they hold a lot of control. And when you look at this here, you can see the top three entities alone produced almost half of the blocks. This was yesterday. Haven't seen the updated stats on this yesterday, but that was Lido Finance, Coinbase were the top two there, controlling a lot of the stake on Ethereum. So we'll dive deeper into that as well as slashing is one big difference. There's already been one node slashed. I'll talk about that kind of stuff next week as well, but let's move on to Cardano for this video here. So if we look here, World Mobile put out an update this week, or actually just today, on some of the updates for September, and the rollout continues with Nigeria. Permission to begin operations has been given by the regulator, which is great to see. In terms of Zanzibar, new air nodes are being shipped and being deployed. Again, I'll leave the links to anything I talk about below where you can go into more in-depth in it, but this, this video is just to give you an idea of everything that's going on. So in terms of rollouts as well, within Zanzibar, charging customers for the service is going to start in October. Kenya, 17,000 plus Airnode locations have been identified for next steps. Within the USA, this one here was interesting. They met with an MNO, a mobile network operator, to discuss shared spectrum. No other information on that yet, but um, potentially we'd see something on that over the next while. So again, I'll leave a link to this. They were just some of the points that jumped out at me. In summary, rollout continues, building continues, which is great to see. Up next, we have NMKR. So if you've ever minted an NFT using NFT Maker, which is now NMKR, then they're doing an airdrop. You can go in and claim that. When you go onto their site, you can go through the claim process. If I go into the site here, I think it's up, here we go, so claim now. Come in here, put in the wallet address that you used to claim before. The next screen takes you to put in your email address then to subscribe to their newsletter. And then you will be able to claim in that airdrop at a later date. The dates are there on the site somewhere. So the claim process here from the 14th to the 28th of September. And then the redeem phase is 29th to the 13th of October, or 29th of September to the 13th of October. Anyone who hasn't heard of NMKR before, I had Patrick, the CEO on the channel a few weeks back. So I'll leave a link to that one down below as well. Next up, we have MinSwap just announced this before I went to record. So for trading fee discounts for Min holders is live. Now the discount is small, but it, the important part here for me is that they're looking at ways of bringing utility. So I've touched on this before about all the DEXs that are out there and in general application or dApps that have 
reward users for yield farming and stuff like that, if there's no incentive for users to hold the token, then all that's going to actually happen with that act token is the price is just going to keep going down because people earn tokens for free and they just sell it off then to buy something else. So it's good to see they're starting to bring in some utility here. And for people who hold min, depending on the amount of min token you hold, then you will get discounted trading fees on the DEX as well. So great to see, and hopefully we'll see other applications or other dApps following along with that as well. Another DEX with updates. So SunderSwap have launched their governance on Testnet. So this is an important part for SunderSwap. They've talked about this for a while and it's good to see that it's nearly ready for mainnet now as well because with yield farming that stopped on SunderSwap, they had initially set out that they do it for six months. That came to an end last month or the month before and it's not going to be re-enabled until it's voted in by the community so in order for the decks really to grow they do need to bring back yield farming i feel and hopefully that will be one of the first votes that we see on mainnet to decide how to do that going forward so i'll show you the voting process in a minute here but one thing i really like about this as well is that when you go to vote on this you don't actually have to pay a transaction fee which is good for the end user will encourage more people to come in and vote how that's done technically and how this is kept accurate and no messing around with the votes. If you go into this video here, which is Pi went on to Andrew Westberg's channel that is Nerd Out. I've mentioned that channel a few times. If you're into the technical side of Cardano, that's definitely one to follow. Then you can check it out there and he goes through the full presentation of how the whole voting system works. If we look at it here, Sunday Swap Governance, it's running on the preview test net right now for anyone who wants to go in and try it out. So when you come in here, if I go into vote now, it's not going to let me because I haven't connected my wallet. If I click on connect wallet, I agree to the terms. Eternal is the only wallet connected right now because it's using the preview test net. Click on Eternal and it should connect for me there. And actually just within Eternal, you can see I have one wallet set up here on preview and down in the bottom right corner is where you change it from mainnet over to preview or whatever test set you're trying to use. So if I come back in here, you can see it has already logged me in. So the vote is here, just put in your vote. Let's say Raspberry, click on vote now, gives me the pop up here. And I'm not sure if I remember the password for this one, let's see. Okay, successfully casted my vote, gives you all the hash keys and you can go on and see Explorer have built functionality where you can go in and check if votes are actually valid as well. I'll touch on that a bit more in another video, but this one is just a summary across the board with Cardano, but good to see steps in the right direction from Sunday Swap. In terms of, and actually just on Sunday Swap, I've got a lot of questions lately about the reverse ISO and when people can claim their tokens for free. As far as I've heard, the latest is by the end of the year, SundaySwap will have that platform out to let people claim their tokens. If you want to go ahead and do it, you can still do it through drip drops. You just have to pay the fees on drip drop, drip drops. So looking at the Cardano Summit happening November 19th to the 21st, they have updated the site during the week to give us a bit more information on what's happening. So it's happening over three days. So the Friday is, or the Saturday is a welcome evenings. The 20th then is all about building on Cardano. You can actually nominate people or projects within the ecosystem for awards. If you come into it here, you can see nominating most impactful single secular operator, blockchain for good, NFT projects, DEXs, standards, developers, wallets, marketplaces, ambassadors. So lots of different categories there that you can vote for. People you feel have made a difference or have provided a lot of value within the Cardano ecosystem. As well, you can nominate speakers. So on the third day of the summit, there is going to be an option for speakers from the community to come in and talk about anything. This could be DeFi, could be NFTs, could be even real world, what's going on, how you can bring the, or bring blockchain into the real world. So if you have someone the, within the ecosystem that you feel would be good for that, you can put them forward here and why you want to put them forward to speak at the Cardano Summit. So that's the updates on that. I think that runs until September 20, or 28th. You can get them votes in. So make sure you do check that out. 
and on voting catalyst voting finishes up on monday that will be the last day for this round of voting so if you haven't voted yet and you did register to vote before the snapshot make sure you get your votes in because they all count in terms of events there is also cnft con happening on october 8th and 9th in the las vegas convention center and there's a pre-party for that on october 7th so you can check that out at cnftcon.io i was looking at the map there earlier today looks to be a lot of different projects attending that so it should be a really good event i'd say unfortunately i won't be able to make that one though Another upcoming event is Rare Bloom, which is 28 days out right now. That's happening the middle of October, 14th to the 15th of October in Colorado. So lots of projects from the Cardano ecosystem will be attending there. I think IOG and the Cardano Foundation will be there as well. So lots to be learned over there. You can check that out. And I think the discount code, the Gemi Paul 10 still works for 10% off your tickets. So moving on then to announcements. So we've seen from the Cardano Foundation, big announcement, Cardano Foundation partners with the Georgian National Wine Agency. The partnership centers around a blockchain-based traceability solution to support the growth of Georgia's wine sector. So this is about bringing traceability onto the blockchain. We've seen talk about this before with Scan Trust, and that is who this is with. And good to see another Irish person here within the Cardano ecosystem or within the Cardano Foundation, Mel, part of this here. So when you come into it here, you can see the details on it and the solution. They've created a solution on the Cardano blockchain to ensure the quality and authenticity of Georgian wine. So I'll leave links to this one down below. You can check out how that's going to work and what's going to happen there. Hopefully I'll be able to get some people, some members from the Cardano Foundation on fairly soon to talk more about the different work they do within the ecosystem. I've seen questions going around about what does the Cardano Foundation actually do? This is one thing that they've done. I'm sure they have lots of other projects they're working on. So hopefully we'll be able to bring someone on that'll be able to go a bit more into in depth into what the role of the Cardano Foundation is. Something else here as well, along with digital identity was, and thanks to Marco who, who tagged me in this one. I actually didn't like the original post. You can see Happy News Cardano community. Atano Prism has been selected in part of the future digital infrastructure development in Japan. So when SMEs apply for grants from the government, this is used to, to prove the existence of the company and it's in under project number eight. And if I open up that link, I have it here because it's auto translated here. So number eight, you can see when you click into it here, unfortunately I can't read any of this here, but the words that I recognize are Cardano and Atala Prism. So we have talked about Atala Prism before as the digital identity solution that IOG have built. And if we scroll down here, I think there is a bit of information William has put it in here. So the graph explains how the different actors, companies, government institutions will be able to store and verify data in a trusted web repository powered by Cardano, Atala Prism and IPFS. Let's go Japan. So good to finally hear a bit more on Atala Prism or Atala Prism being used anyway. Thanks to everyone who tagged here and the guys who explained what it actually means. Also, there was an article by IOG lately on DIDs, so the recent DID core specification approval at the World Wide Web Consortium provided clearer and stronger foundations for identity platforms building decentralized identifiers. So they go into that and down the bottom as well for people who haven't looked into Atala Prism. There is an explainer here on what Atala Prism actually is. So that's it from the Cardano ecosystem this week. Well, what I could find anyway, I'm sure there's lots more going on. If like that on Twitter, if you ever see anything going on, feel free to tag me so I can include them updates in these kind of videos. I hope you got value. Please do share it out if you have comment questions or anything else I should include in other ones down below. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good weekend and I'll talk to you soon.